YouTube viewers, welcome to another episode of Malcontent Corner where I hope to share with you the various tips, tricks, and secrets of things that I have come across in the course of my day-to-day -day life. Today's episode, we're going to cover the Harley Click of Dread. We're going to define what it is, go through the mechanics of what's happening, and then we'll go through a little bit of circuitry schematics to kind of show you what may possibly be causing the problem. So what is the Harley Click of Dread? The Harley Click of Dread is where uh, it is a, an affliction that impacts typically the older uh, evolution-based big twin uh, Harley Davidsons. And it's when you hit the starter button and all you get is a click, click, click. And it's called the Click of Dread because it typically will not happen in the comforts of your driveway or your garage. It will happen in the most inopportune time Typically, the farther away you are from your home, the more likely it is to happen. And uh, it's, it's just one of those things. Harley, the, the Evolution motors don't have kickstarts unless you have a modified uh, motorcycle. And when it happens, you just kind of, it sucks. And it happened to me two times. I was fortunate both times that a... If I let the bike sit for a while and hit the starter, it would crank over and work fine. And it would work fine for the rest of the day. But uh, I finally got to the bottom of what it was, and we'll cover more on that in the circuitry. But what's going on here, and I'm going to use my friend here, Mr. Car Starter, as an example. Now, what's going on is that this solenoid plunger that lives in the housing of this starter is not closing completely and that's the clicking that you hear so what what is this plunger how does it work why is it in there what you have here and this is again this is a car starter uh, on this side don't let this extension throw you but on this you have two studs on here both of them threaded both of them have nuts on them uh, you have a, a heavier stud and this connects to the positive lead of your battery you have a smaller stud here, and this is the feed from your ignition switch, which provides 12 volts to this when you actually click the, the start. When you turn the key on the car to the start position, it provides 12 volts to this little stud here. Uh, so now, on the Harleys, they don't use the threaded stud on the solenoid. It's usually a, uh, a plug, a male-female uh, bladed plug, and it sits on the back here, and it, it's got a little it just plugs right in there so don't let that throw you the mechanics are the same now what happens is when you provide the 12 volts to this little solenoid feed it puts power to the magnetic coil or to the coils in here and those coils create a magnetic field which in theory should pull this plunger forward and in this plunger moving forward it actually does two things number one this gear is in a retracted position right now but it moves this gear up so that this gear will engage the teeth on the flywheel and simultaneously this this plunger here has a copper ring I don't know how well you can see that but there's a copper ring on there and what it does is when it moves forward it actually makes contact this copper ring with a contact on this side of the case and a contact on this side of the case now what you have here is another lead that goes to the starter itself so that when this plunger moves forward in the process of, of traveling forward, it will engage this gear, but it will also contact the contact on this side of the solenoid and this side of the solenoid and complete the circuit. What's happening here is this solenoid or this plunger in the solenoid is either not engaging all the way, or if it is, it's not completing the circuit between here and here and making this motor crank. That's what, that's what that clicking is. If it's loud enough and you hear it, this is what's going on. So what we're going to cover next is circuitry and how it should work. Uh, this is the mechanics of it. We'll go through a little bit of the electronic circuitry to go give you an idea on what's happening and then hopefully give you some insight as to things you can do to fix this problem once and for all. Okay, what we have here is a very crude example of the uh, starter circuit on a Harley. There's actually two circuits here if you think about it. 
The first circuit is a 12 volt lead that comes from the battery and connects to the main terminal on your solenoid. On, on our example starter here, that would be this big terminal lug right here. Then you have a second circuit which taps off of that and goes through a 30 amp uh, circuit breaker. And that actually provides power to the rest of the bike. This is your ignition switch here. So that when you have the bike in the run or the accessory position, it provides power to your lights, ignition, your horn, and in this case, our run start circuit. The circuit feeds through a 15 amp fuse, which then provides voltage to the run switch. When you close the run switch, it should provide voltage to the start switch. When you hit the start switch, what should happen, in theory, the coil in the starter relay here should magnetize, closing the, uh, the, uh, the gap here, the, making this, pulling this contact down to this contact, providing voltage to the solenoid, which in turn would magnetize it, and pull the plunger forward, completing the circuit and starting the bike. Now, what happened, as I told you in the, uh, previously, was that this plunger was not moving forward far enough to contact, to make the contact between the two points here to get the starter to crank over. Now, the first time it happened to me, I waited about a half an hour and came out and hit the starter and the bike started. Didn't have a problem the rest of the weekend. Got it home. Pulled the seat off and found my negative uh, ground wire here was loose on the battery. So I cleaned it up, tightened it up, cleaned up the positive, tightened it up, thought I had the problem licked. The problem happened again, and I thought, okay, well, maybe it's a solenoid here. Now, in order to gain access to the inside of the solenoid, which is really easy, the first thing, and remember, safety is always imperative here at Malcontent Corner. You want to disconnect your main po your main lead, your positive lead here, because what will happen is, is if you're working on this and you drop a screwdriver and it goes from this main lead here and let's say the other end of your screwdriver or box wrench connects with the um, exhaust pipe, it will spark at the very least dam and possibly damage your chrome. But if it ends up getting uh, sitting there, it can actually burn the wire to a, they can burn this main wire here to a crisp and in the process it may actually burn uh, the bike to the ground. So just be careful pull the lead off and then once it's off you can gain access to the solenoid cover with these three screws here. Now again this is a car starter and your Harley is not going to have this plastic extension on here. And one other thing I want to make note of is you're going to see a wire that comes uh, that will actually come up to a plug right about where this connector is here on this starter. And that is that they because the Harley they don't use a threaded stud on their starter. Again, they use a male female bladed plug. So you're going to want to basically pull that wire off and clean it. Uh, get some contact cleaner, make sure there's no dirt or filth on it, and clean it up and make and just plug it back in. Pull the cover off here and you can pull the plunger out and clean the contacts inside the solenoid here. Now I want you to make be aware that when you pull this plunger out, there is actually a, a spring on the end here. And what that spring does is when you when you the starter is not in the start position, it pushes this plunger back, retracting the gear back into the housing and breaking the circuit for the starter, which is why the starter doesn't continue running. But if you also notice there's a copper coil on here, and I'm sorry, a copper ring on here, and you can clean that ring up with 320 grit sandpaper. Um, you're not, this is a brand new one, so you're going to be hard pressed to get one that looks this nice and shiny if yours has been used at all. But just go over it, go over this face here two or three times. You're, you're, not, you're not trying to sand out everything. You don't want to make this washer so thin that it becomes useless. It, trust me, it takes a lot of work to do it, especially using 320 grit sandpaper. But you just want to polish it up a little bit. 
When you get done with that, you're going to look inside that solenoid housing and you're going to find two contacts that look like this. And they're about a half an inch to an inch inside the housing there. And you just want to put some, fold some sandpaper over the tip of your finger and just lightly polish these up too. Again, these will be pitted as well. Uh, there's a reason why batteries typically are, are rated in cold cranking amps. And this is basically a giant magnetic electrical switch. So, or actually electromechanical switch to be exact. So what, when it magnetizes, it actually slams shut against this contact here. And in doing such, it can create sparks and a certain degree of pitting. When you get done with that, you want to clean out the inside of your housing here. Now, uh, you do not want to use brake cleaner, carb cleaner, throttle body cleaner. Those are no-no. And the reason why is that can actually get in here and damage some of the coating on the windings. So if you can, go to your local automotive store and get a can of, of electrical contact cleaner. And I think you can pick it up at uh, Walmart. I believe they offer it. But you just want to put some on a rag and clean out the inside here. And what you're trying to remove is any sandpaper residue that might be in there, any dirt that's in there. Plus, you're going to find there's going to be some copper residue in here from that switch closing over the years. So just clean it out. It doesn't have to be spotless, but you just want to get a majority of the dirt out. Once you get done, you can put your cover back on here and see what comes of that. Now I did that thinking the problem was cured and sure enough it was not. Uh, this past summer it reared its ugly head again and in looking over the circuit here what I ended up looking at was this starting relay and the reason why is my bike's in 1993 this is 2017 uh, so basically it's a 24 year old part and this is what that starting relay looks like. There's not a whole lot to it. It's a $10 item. And I figured, okay, I'm going to just replace this. Now, I'm going to pull the cover off of this. If you have a 93, 94 soft tail, this actually lives under the seat next to the ignition module. Um, if you're not sure where it is on your bike, just look at your service manual. But, it, but typically, it's tucked somewhere out of the way. And removing the cover, what you see in here is you see these copper windings. And when you hit your start switch, it, it provides voltage to this, which creates a magnetic field and basically closes this plunger down to the contact, which then feeds the solenoid. Now, there's not a lot of room in this. I mean, I'd say the gap there is 30 thousandths of an inch. But when I pulled this plunger off, I noticed that the contacts in here were pretty badly pitted and corroded. True, you could probably clean them up, get some more use out of it. But considering the hassles of pulling the seat off and that this is a 20 some odd year, I mean, even if you have a 1999 Harley, at this point, this part would be about 18 years old. Just spend the 10 bucks and get a new one. Uh, it's a cheap way to at least eliminate it. Plus, while you're at it, you can also make sure your, your contacts on here are clean and not corroded. Well, I replaced that, and I have not had the click of dread since. And I actually noticed one other thing since then. Before, when uh, since I've had the bike, now mine's a 93, I bought it in 94, or I'm sorry, 99. I noticed that when the bike would sit for any length of time, even though I had a battery tender on it, and uh, if I rode it once, you know, if I rode it that day, it was fine. It didn't really uh, rear its ugly head. But if it sat for more than a day or two, I would have to hit this start switch three or four times before the starter would crank over. It was like I got the click of dread, but it would it would eventually just click into gear after about the third or fourth try. Annoying, but nothing really serious. It's just, okay, you hit it, you know, click, 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 blam, off you go. Since I've replaced the starter relay, I have noticed that I do not have that problem. So I actually think that this was kind of giving me warning signs that it was on the way out. Now, why would it work all day and then all of a sudden not work? I can't tell you. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why. 
uh, maybe because it sits under the seat with the oil tank and the battery and your seat above it and your butt on top of that maybe it just would get hot and the uh, contacts would just per make enough resistance in between those contacts to not fully energize the coils here on the solenoid but I have noticed that since I replaced this I do not have that problem where I have to hit the starter three or four times I can leave the bike sit for a day a week a month two months and now when I hit that starter the, uh, the start switch this starter cranks each and every time without fail now is that the only thing that can cause problems in this circuit oh heavens no uh, you know any any corrosion along the way here can cause problems uh, you know, I mean, that I was telling you about the wire that plugs in the solenoid. If there's corrosion on that, that could cause problems. Uh, the switch, uh, the relay can cause problems. These switches can get uh, corrosion and oxidation on them that can cause problems. And actually, considering that this could be an intermittent problem, it may not be one item. Uh, you know, it could just be a culmination of oxidation and corrosion that builds up that makes enough resistance to draw the current drain. To, so that to, to provide enough resistance to where you do not get enough current to the coils in here to energize the solenoid 100 percent but if you clean your battery connections and you clean this I would say replace this and you'll probably find most of your problems are taken care of um, the anything that that moves and connects hence this 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 uh, and even the contacts in here are going to be most likely to provide problems especially if it will work fine one minute and then you wait a hot second and it will not work later and then if you wait a little bit more you hit it and it starts again so going forward uh, make sure your contacts are tight on your battery make sure you have a good battery too if your battery is four plus years older do yourself a favor and replace it it has been my experience that these batteries will die without notice, without warning. So if your battery is four plus years old, it's cheap insurance, replace this, but make sure your contacts are good on it. You can easily clean the contacts in here, and then you can always replace your starter relay. Again, nothing, nothing hugely expensive here to do. This is a freebie. Uh, this may cost you some money if you replace it, but the starter relay is only a $10, $15 item. So... With that, I hope it helps give you a little a little idea on how the circuit should work and some of the things that can go wrong. Uh, all things considered, given the age of our bikes, uh, I, if I had the problem again, I would strongly recommend the, uh, replacing this starter relay. If you continue to have problems after that, you're going to have to troubleshoot it and figure out if you're getting a uh, connection here or is it something up here. But uh, I have a feeling between this and this, you'll take care of most of your click of dread. So... Anyways, I hope that helps. Uh, may it help you troubleshoot or at least get a, a good start on trying to fix your click of dread problem with your Evolution Powered Harley. I uh, thank you very much for tuning in and watching. And please stay tuned later for additional episodes here from Malcontent Corner. Have a good day. We'll talk to you later.